back in 1929, it was quite interesting to watch what the blockbusters were in the world. All the major movies shown in black and white, obviously, back in the day, was about a very ambitious man, a dictator, who would attempt to take over the world. Isn't that weird? All of the blockbuster movies. See, creative people, artists, are so in tune and so intuitive spiritually. It's many times so important that we listen to them, look at what they're saying. And tonight, I'm wanting us to just consider the message of this movie, Avatar. I mustn't do that. Somebody was saying to me the other day, I'm a Illuminati guy. So I'm talking to the pinky. Pinky, don't do that. <laughs> it's beautiful when we help each other. It was in Bloemfontein last week. A guy came to see me afterwards and says, are you a member of the Illuminati? <laughs> so now, CS, I'm going to watch you two to see what your fingers do. Because for those who didn't watch the movie, the storyline is quite simple. And I'm wanting to talk about it in terms of it being a parable, because it is a parable of the times in which we're living. And a very powerful, very accurate, very true parable. We'll unpack it in the next few minutes. You saw the guy, ex-marine, injured, confined to a wheelchair. He goes into um, hypersleep or hibernation, flies way across the galaxy to another planet. And when he gets there, as you saw in the clip, the promotional clip, he gets made an offer. If you'll work for us, we're going to get you out of this wheelchair. But there's a trick. It won't be you. It'll be a part of you. But we'll give you another body called an avatar. And you'll be able to live your dream. You'll be able to exercise yourself. You'll be able to express yourself. Live your life as another you, as an avatar. I believe it's a very powerful parable of our day. Avatar is a Hindu word from the Sanskrit word avatari definition. It speaks of incarn reincarnation. You see, of the many, many myriad gods Hinduism worships, it speaks of an embodiment in a new form. And the Hindu gods would come and assume a new body of a lion or a dragon, and they'd actually get an upgrade, believe it or not. And that new body would be called an avatar. That's the original meaning. In science fiction, as we just saw it, it speaks of a hybrid creature composed of human and alien DNA that's remotely controlled by the mind of a genetically matched human being, as found in the movie. But for most of us geeks, are there geeks in the house tonight? Uh, there are two geeks on this side. Anybody over here? It's okay. There are no ladies watching. You can tell me. <laughs> It speaks of an iconographic or another image by which a person represents himself or herself on a communications network or in a virtual re community, such as a chat room or multiplayer game. But the bottom line is this. People choose an avatar based on how they want other people to see them. I'm, I'm going to have to say that again because this is the big thing. This is the big reality. People choose an avatar based on how... They want other people to see them. It's about how other people see me. It's about how other people perceive me. It's about how other people ascribe status and identity and dignity to me. It's about other people. Are we on the same page here? Okay. The Apostle Paul, speaking of the last days, I speak about this often. I really believe that it's time that we contextualize ourselves as humans, but mostly as Christians. You may not be aware of it, but these are the last days. We're in the middle of the last days. This is it. And it's not the countdown to oblivion. 
God didn't create the world to destroy it. God is an eternal God. Say he's eternal. And I'm going to speak about Christ tonight as the Alpha and the Omega, the one who was and the one who is and the one who is to come. God doesn't wake up sometime and think, huh, I've got to come up with a new idea as to what to do with creation. He doesn't do that. It's all pre-planned. All that's happening when I say it's the last days is we must get our heads around the fact that we are nearing the end of an epoch, of an epoch, of a dispensation. This dispensation was never meant to go on forever. Can somebody say amen? A lot of people are desperate to, to make it happen. A lot of people are desperate to save it, to salvage it, to fix it. Our job is just to make sure that Christ's mission on earth gets accomplished. Can I tell you what Christ's mission on earth is? Can I tell you what our mission is in Christ? It's to justify the shed blood of Christ. You don't get it. Our mission is to justify the shed blood of Christ. That's it. Everything else is peripheral. Everything else is incidental. If you're a believer, you need to get your head and your heart around what that means. And so you're in the right place tonight. If you don't get your head and your heart around that, you're going to be a very confused, a very unhappy puppy in the days that we live in. The Apostle Paul says, but understand this, 2 Timothy 3 verse 1, that in the last days will come, some serious times will set him. He says it's perilous, it's great stress and trouble. And then he tells us nothing about the times, but he tells us the people that makes the times so perilous. The people that make the time so stressful, so dangerous, some translations say. People will be lovers of themselves. People will be utterly self-centered. I want you to say that with me because if you don't accept that, then you're in disagreement with God about the times in which we're living. Read this with me. People will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered. Now that right there is bad news, but it's the truth. And it afflicts all of us. I'm not talking to people out there in the room, I'm talking to people in here. And in there, behind that skull, and in that chest of yours. I'm talking to all of us in the room tonight. And scripture wants us to deal with this reality. Because the blood of Jesus Christ has much to say into this challenge. So the idea of the avatar relates to something that you're going to hear about often. Some of you haven't heard about it. It's great if you hear about it for the first time tonight. But the age of the avatar can be called the age of appropriation. To appropriate means to take without permission. Can we have the slide there? to take without permission or consent to cease, to take or to make use of without authority or right. In short, it means to steal. And in this case, it talks of the theft of that which is immaterial and abstract. And I'm gonna give you a, a couple of ideas. So that parable of the avatars as seen in the movie is a very powerful one because it's the greatest temptation facing this generation and the world today. And I'm gonna show you some examples tonight. Some of them you know, some of them you don't, but it's a pervasive, a universal reality. The bottom line that I'm wanting to get to tonight is people actually believe that they can steal another life and make it theirs, stand up inside of it and be awesome and be cool, that I can leave my wheelchair, I can forget about my real life and my real self in my wheelchair, and with a little bit of magic, I can get myself this massive exoskeleton, I can run around another planet and just be totally awesome, totally untouchable. And that is not just a cute idea in a movie. It's a fantasy that so many of us nurture and that the Holy Spirit would speak into tonight. 
Tonight, before we finish, a lot of people are going to bring their avatars to Christ. Tonight's that night when it dies. Tonight's the night you'll get back into your wheelchair and roll down the aisle to come to Christ. That's my message tonight. So let's walk backwards into it. There's a lot of research being done around the issue that the Apostle Paul highlights. It's called narcissism, the extreme love of self, self obsession, and extreme self centeredness. Let's read you some quotes. For some people, appearances are all there is. But watch this contradiction. And their self hatred knows no bounds. That's why that avatar picture is so powerful. You hate the guy in the wheelchair. You hate the pathetic guy. But you love the new self. You love the avatar. You love the awesome self. You love the blue self. You love the powerful self. Because appearances are everything. It's more important than the truth. They're ashamed of the real selves. So says Joanna M. Ashman. A psychotherapist from Ireland Northern Ireland says the following, narcissistic behavior is prevalent in our culture today. Actually, it's reaching epidemic proportions. Another researcher, a group of them say, narcissists are often thought of as people who are in love with him or herself, but this is not necessarily the case. Narcissists are in love with an avatar, a made up image of themselves that they attempt to project out into the world in lieu of their true self. Most of the time, their true self is wounded, and as such, they have an extraordinary feeling of inadequacy. The guy in the wheelchair is always in the background. He's always trying to come forward. He's always trying to get help, but he's being shoved into a little corner at home. Many cultures around the world some of them, them in, in Southern Africa, we've come across that as we've gone from shack to shack in some places, looking for the people in the wheelchairs, looking for the people with disabilities, and communities get very mad with us because we're not allowed to help those people because those people bring a curse on the community. So if we are to help them, we bring a curse on the community. I talked to some people at my house full of YBAM people from all across the world, and they were telling me about a massive lawsuit that they're facing from the government of Brazil right now. You won't believe why. Because in the Amazon jungle, there are tribes that believe that if you have twins, it brings bad luck on the tribe. So one of the twins must get killed. Or if a kid's born blind or disabled in any way, it has to die. But watch this. The parents aren't allowed to kill the child. The parent has to bury the child alive for some deep, inexplicable reason. So what's happening with them reaching, the missionaries, the YWAM workers reaching the tribes, as soon as the child gets buried, they sneak up and they dig up the child and they rescue the kids. The Brazilian government feels it's a violation of culture. They're meddling. They're imposing their Western values on people who are meant to remain primitive because it's their cultural whatever. Some tribes feel that way. Some individuals feel that way. We've got to keep that guy in the wheelchair locked up, out of sight, out of mind. We're dealing with massive arrogance and massive shame that live side by side on the inside of a lot of people that are conflicted that must come to Christ to get healed. That's what the prophetic word was about tonight. Because the blue guy wants worship. The awesome guy wants worship. The awesome guy comes to worship Christ. And Christ is saying, I want this to stop tonight. I want the guy in the wheelchair in the service, I want him to worship. Because he understands he's not deserving of worship. He's a nice guy. The other guy is delusional. The other guy needs help. The other guy needs my healing. Are you with me tonight? Let's let's get you another quote. Like a disease, narcissism is caused by certain factors and it spreads through particular channels and it appears as various symptoms and might be halted 
by preventative measures and cures. The, the world's hoping to fix it. And it comes from a book called Nar The Narcissism Epidemic. Living in an age of entitlement. It's a very powerful, powerful, very accurate title for a book. And if you wanted to, you could uh, get the author's name so you can go and look for it. So what I believe a few sins are that are being committed now, I, I know we don't speak about sins from the pulpit anymore because it's uncool, but uh, if you want cool sermons, you can watch uh, a couple of guys on television or on the internet. You can download their stuff, and they're going to tell you how awesome your blue man is and how the sky's the limit and how there's nothing the blue man can't do. Tonight, I've got bad news for you. Christ is not interested in the blue guy. He's not interested in the avatar. He didn't die for the avatar. He doesn't want to save the avatar. He wants every avatar out of church. He wants the authentic self. doesn't matter if the authentic self is in a wheelchair, has no legs, has no arms, has no persona, has no intelligence. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where, where the little guy in the wheelchair has been. It doesn't matter what he's been through. Christ is interested only in him. As Fani shared tonight, Christ is not interested in your medal and your trophies of self-achievement. Christ is not interested. I love the fact that Fani shared tonight. Christ loves the guy with the limp. Christ loves the guy in the wheelchair. Christ thinks he's awesome. So let's just run through a couple of stuff. So we're talking about tonight a guy in a wheelchair that wants to create a story that is not his. He's wanting to create a life that is not his. You call this narrative appropriation in, in, in terms. You're going to learn a couple of words this year. This is one I want you to remember. And it speaks of the fact that there's an attempt to steal theft of another's life story. And this expresses itself in cultural, social, and political. Dissimulation just means masquerading, means being fake, counterfeit. It talks about impersonating. So, I want that picture on, on cultural appropriation. I, I don't know if you know this girl. Rachel, anybody knows her? Hands up, one, one person, James knows her. Okay, guys, I don't know what world you live in, but there are massive things happening all around you. And you get the tail end of it and it affects you because these things you pick up in the drink waters in the sky above you. The theft that we're talking tonight comes from the fact that there's a spirit vying with the Holy Spirit to take over the lives, the minds, and the hearts of men. And Christ called the author and the origin of that spirit, the one who kills, steals, and destroys. So the theft that we're talking about tonight is very insidious, but it does not come from the Holy Spirit. God opposes it. This young lady that you see on the left is the same one we see on the right. She pretended to be black for ten, some 10 years of her life, still tries to be black. If we can go to the following picture, she's been telling lies about herself, saying that that guy's her father. She's got two snow white parents. She doesn't have a black person anywhere in her generations from the time they came from Sweden and Germany and Scandinavia or wherever, Poland. But she has problems. She said she picked up the problems when she came to South Africa. The black people here were so cool, she decided it's better to be black. Sometimes even crazy people have a point, you know. <laughs> but now she, she's got a problem. And the problem is that of authenticity. She is white people. It doesn't matter how much polish she sticks on that skin of hers, how many wigs she wears. She was the leader of the NAC, NAACP, which is the big black civil rights movement in America. Not of the whole movement, but of the chapter somewhere in, in one of the northern states. And she was telling stories about how much racial discrimination she's had to endure. And, and a lot of, she, she pretended to have kids that were black, and, and they actually happened to be her brothers whom her parents adopted. They're missionaries. Rachel 
Dozalel. She transformed herself into the person she regarded as a true self. And the true self that she figured she ought to be was an African American, according to The Guardian. In time, she changed her appearance, revised the history, and constructed a new family. She adopted a series of African American dads and presented to the world a black son who turned out to be her brother. It's one thing to be committed to cultural appreciation. It's one thing to have a heart for cultural exchange or cultural assimilation. I'm not going to tell you what all those things mean. Those are all nice things. Cultural appropriation. When you want to steal the cultural identity that belonged to other people and take it for yourself, it's theft. Now, it sounds quite cute, but I'm going to tell you what Christ says about it in just a moment, and the fear of God is going to come on you. He feels strongly about it. Let's look at a couple of other cute people who are thieves too. Oh, you're awake here tonight. <laughs> no. no, generational appropriation. I want, I want the, the Hollywood lady with the miniskirt on. No, 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 no. It's the wrong order there. We're in there. Oh, there we go. There we go. The lady on the left, who knows who the lady on the left is? Adele, hello. <laughs> okay, Adele looks like your grandmother, but she's only 25 years old, and for some reason she thinks it's cool to look a generation or two older than she is. I guess some people think it's cool. And then, then there's a granny on the right. You think that's appropriate? I don't know. If she were my granny or my mother... I'd have some advice for her. <laughs> Do you have a nightgown? <laughs> okay, let's look at some more people. It's, it's getting scary. Okay, the next guy... Is a Canadian, the guy's at Bible school, but it, no, 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 this, this is a cool guy. <laughs> but I have a problem with him. He thinks he's 16. Ladies, who thinks that's cool? Okay, so yes, we, we got a, we're going to have a massive prayer line tonight. <laughs> we're going to have a massive prayer line. I just want you to know that. We got a couple of weird people in the house tonight. No, Jenna, he's 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 cool. It's just not entirely appropriate. I don't know if you, if he were your grandpa, would you hang with him in public? I knew there'd be a mixed response. Quite frankly, I I admire him. I like the fact that he's not a role model. Older men ought to be role models, it's, I'm just saying.